Hey friends, welcome back. This is the third lesson of the Infinity Course, and uh, this is also philosophical in nature still. And after this, we'll move on to the um, to the methods, to the direct pointers. But I just want to give you this concept or elucidate on this concept of the black hole or, or the inner black hole because sometimes in my teachings or meetings or retreats I refer to the black hole or the inner black hole and I just want you to know how this relates to the different teachings and especially to the infinity teaching. The idea is that the black hole is a symbol for um, the threshold of awareness reflecting back upon the infinite one. So when consciousness or you, free, the free agent that you are, starts wondering what lies before or what was there before the creation or the emanation or the ability of awareness arose, what was there? As soon as you start to have that question, what starts to happen is um, a black hole in a way the inner black hole starts to develop. So what is that? The inner black hole is, is um, kind of like if you imagine the infinite vastness that we imagined in the previous lesson, infinite vastness without any reference point. But now imagine that awareness is a bubble inside of this infinite vastness. Now inside this bubble, awareness is usually aware of everything that happens inside of that bubble. And then within that, all that is in this awareness bubble, there's infinite smaller bubbles that represent the individuation consciousnesses, which all derive their power from the, the one um, bubble, which is that base awareness that gives rise to everything. So imagine infinite vastness and the bubble of awareness or a bubble of consciousness, doesn't really matter, but just infinite vastness and a bubble. And now imagine that this bubble, which is itself the ability to be conscious, and usually it's conscious of everything inside of its own bubble. It generates a creation within itself, sort of like a snow globe. So it keeps itself entertained and it's expressing itself and all that. But what if that snow globe or that bubble starts to wonder about itself? Then it starts to realize first that it is awareness itself. So instead of being mesmerized with the contents of the bubble, the bubble becomes aware of its own substratum, the own context for the content, the container for the contents of experience, and starts to realize the awareness itself, which is responsible and inseparable from each experience that arises within it. So it starts to realize the nature of reality. It starts to realize the ground of being. It starts to realize the substratum, the essence of all that is, which is awareness itself, because without awareness, there is no all that is. There is no experience. Now, what if this awareness not only becomes aware of its own substratum, its own bubble nature, so to speak, or its own whatever makes up the bubble, so to speak, but what if it also wonders what is beyond this bubble? What is beyond the presence of awareness which makes everything happen? What is beyond even that? And now imagine that that question, when it genuinely arises for someone, for a consciousness, is almost like activating the infinite one coming from outside the bubble using a needle and it starts to penetrate or pop the substratum of that bubble. So that question is a very powerful and activating question, even if nothing seems to initially happen per se. But to simply rest with the question mark, what's beyond consciousness? And we'll get into this practice in the next lesson. It is like activating this popping of the bubble. So the black hole is what we would perceive from inside the bubble, looking at the substratum of awareness, and then the infinite one, in a sense, piercing open. This is all symbology, but it works. Um, so popping open the bubble, the substratum of awareness itself. And now from the inside, we can actually see outside of the bubble. We can actually see into the nature of the infinite one with no veil in between. And this is what we perceive as the black hole. Again, semi-symbolically speaking, but it actually has some roots um, 
in the way that reality actually works, both on a spiritual non-physical plane, as well as to an extent on a physical plane. Um, there's this scientist called Nassim Haramain, which, uh, who has several videos, and, but his work explores the idea that there is a black hole at the center of each atom, uh, which to me confirmed my instinct or my intuition or what I realized non-physically or experientially which is that at the center of every object, even from a physical point of view, even though at this quantum level you start to lose all sense of space and time and linearity, so it's hard to speak in terms of at the core of every physical atom, because even at a subatomic, subatomic level, things don't really operate as physically as we perceive them here. So take this all with a grain of salt and sort of make it more slightly more magical than coming at it from a completely purely physical scientific point of view. Just use this symbology as a means to realize something for yourself. But basically what he suggests, and I suggest the same, um, is that at the very core of every object, of every creation, of every molecule, of the sun, of the earth, of, um, of a simple atom, at the core of that there is the existence of a constant black hole. Now, I still haven't gotten into the significance of the black hole. The significance of the black hole is basically that it represents the coalescing of creation back into union, back into the infinite one. So when you look into a black hole, you can use this metaphor, again, as sort of a meditation or contemplation, and realize that everything that's sort of being sucked into that black hole is, in a way, dematerializing into nothingness, going back into the Creator. And also my theory is that once this whole universe achieves a certain spiritual mass, a certain spiritual realization, as soon as the frequency of all of the expressions that are part of this particular universal bubble are self-realized, are self-satisfied, all of it will coalesce back into what we would perceive as an all-consuming ginormous black hole until nothing is left and a new creation, quote unquote, on the other side of the black hole, not necessarily literally, but as the after effect of the black hole, some scientists call it the white hole idea, everything that is learned from that creation coalesces back into the infinite one, into nothingness, if you will. None of the essences are lost, but all of the forms are seemingly lost. But everything that's extracted from form, everything that has been extracted from the experiences that were provided by the illusion of that particular creation or universe. Now all the consciousnesses, all of the free will, all of the awareness that has utilized that particular illusion of creation, of physicality and non-physicality and all the different densities of creation, when they all reach this spiritual mass level, then this creation can no longer sustain itself in form because it has exhausted its purpose. It's just like when in your life you have learned from a particular theme or you have learned from a particular experience completely everything you needed to learn, then that particular appearance stops manifesting in your life. It just disappears. It no longer has the food or the fuel or the reason or the purpose that it needs to keep on appearing and sustaining itself. Similarly, on a universal creation level, when this creation has completely been exhausted because all of its free agents have explored everything that the one awareness wanted it to explore with this creation, and therefore this creation itself can also be seen as a lifetime to the infinite awareness, that is the first distortion of the one, if you're still with me. So it's basically like, just like this is your life, and when the purpose of this life have life has exhausted itself, the form disappears, but the essence of everything that is learned is extracted and is used to expand upon your particular individuated I am consciousness, soul consciousness's journey and is absorbed. And so you merge back into your soul level of consciousness before you may emerge into another life or another density or another projection of consciousness to explore something else in a different way. Now, extrapolate this on a universal creation type level bubble scale, and we're kind of talking about the same thing. This whole creation of millions, billions of years is basically a single life of the all that is awareness, within which everything will coalesce back into that original primal state when it's exhausted. Nevertheless, since 
time is not really real, we don't have to wait till the end of the universe. That will be its own stage, that will be its own thing. But the significance of the black hole is simply the symbol of coalescing back into the creator because you have extracted all that you needed to extract from a particular appearance or creation. So factually, every single moment, you are expressing yourself and without noticing it for most people, you're actually non-existent in form because every single nanosecond is alternated. It's like a flickering, constant flickering at billions of times each, what we perceive as a second. So creation is there. Something is learned from it using consciousness and then instantaneously right after everything disappears. It no longer exists. It's the infinite black hole. So even on a micro level, on a micro scale, this happens constantly. And as that same scientist um, Nassim said, did you realize that half of the time you don't exist? And it's kind of like that. So the black hole simply signifies the non-creation moment or the threshold looking from the point of view of creation, looking back into the creator and generating this hole in the substratum of a universe, of a creation or of a consciousness. So this inner symbol can be, this symbol can be used as a, as a way to realize the inner black hole, so to speak, to let yourself go through the inner black hole and realize what's on the other end, which is nothing but infinity. Nothing ever happened. The infinite one, infinite intelligence without form. So have fun with this visualization. Let this, maybe watch this video um, one, or, um, one or two more times just to get all the subtleties of it and meditate on some of the ideas that I shared with you. And then I'll see you back in the next um, stage of this course, which will dive straight into the first method for realizing the infinite one. And the, I've already given some methods and visualizations, but we'll go more directly to the methodical approach. Enjoy.